Okay, we're live on YouTube. All right. Facebook giving us some trouble. Yeah, we're almost there. time on Facebook. All right. I haven't got a notific notification yet, but I assume we're, we're streaming on Facebook. Oh, yep, there we are. There we go. Let's roll with the punches. Hello, Hello. world. Hey, welcome back. Geek Philosophy, episode 24. Man. We've gotten up there, haven't we? I feel yeah. old doing this. What, 24 weeks in a row? <laughs> hey, well, we're, uh, we're almost halfway, yeah. half mm -hmm. of a year, right? Yep, and wanted to wish everyone, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Hope yeah. everyone had a chance to either get a turkey coma or have a big food baby. I did both. What about you? I tried to get a food coma, but I had to go see Creed right after. Oh, yeah. So... I cut back a little bit to make sure I didn't pass out during grade. The first world problems. Yeah, first, very first world problems right there. Um, but before we get into you know Creed and all the other geek geek news, I need to know how's your experience on the on the other side on on the on the, on place the PlayStation side, buddy. So I've, I've had my PlayStation now for uh, PlayStation Four Slim for almost a week. But it's now Sunday. Mm -hmm. Got it on Wednesday. On, uh, a, on a holiday weekend. Oh, on that, a holiday weekend. That's glorious. So, and uh, I, I uh, got the Spider-Man 2 bundle, Black Friday bundle, uh, and I went ahead and picked up God of War um, today because they were on a steep discount. I uh, picked up uh, The Last of Us Remastered uh, and uh, uh, Zero. Um, I forgot the name of it already. The... Uh, the, the Archery, archery game. Uh, it's like uh, post-apocalyptic giant robots everywhere. Uh, is it Horizon? Yeah, yeah Horizon Zero Dawn. Zero, Thank yeah, you. there it is. I knew there was a zero in there somewhere. I haven't played uh, either of those yet. Um, but so far, uh, Spider-Man is amazing. Uh, I uh, I did want to point out that uh, since uh, I'm not the sort of person who has like a, an emotional reaction to a lot of things, um, maybe more so than, than Stone than Face, Stone, Stone Face Killer right here, or, or at least I, you know, I, I, I try to put on that. Uh, but uh, so we all know uh, what uh, week and a half ago, yeah, we lost Stan Lee. Uh, I started playing Spider Man, and uh, it's not a spoiler because it's like the third or fourth mission into the game, into the main storyline. Uh, there's a scene where uh, Mary Jane and Peter go into a restaurant uh, to have a meal. Uh, they call it, I think it's Max uh, Restaurant, and they get ready to leave. And as they're walking out the door, you hear a familiar uh, voice, and he says, uh, "You know, glad to see you two kids back together." Mm -hmm. And I actually had an emotional reaction to that because it's like, you know, it almost felt like uh, like he had a grandfather pass away or something. Yeah, because yeah, you, you see this guy in every movie, you know, he's responsible for so many things, uh, and uh, so I thought that was really cool. Um, also, uh, uh, I started God of War uh, today. Mm -hmm. um, so far, it's great. 
the most is that why you're growing a beard out longer yeah yeah <laughs> i'm trying, trying to be more kratos like uh you know maybe i'll get it down to about right there um but uh it just seems to be way more um mature and grown up compared to the other games where it's just a hack and slash mm -hmm. still great games i've played all the god of war main mainline god of war games um, but, uh, it's just, not only is it beautiful, but it's really impressive because, uh, it was pointed out to me before I started playing that, um, w with, uh, with God of War, uh, on PS4, you, it doesn't cut at all. It's, I think around like a 30 hour storyline. Mm -hmm. And if you can stay up those full 30 some hours and play it from start to finish, the camera does not cut. There's not a single load time, anything. It looks like you're watching a movie and playing through a movie. Nice. Um, so really impressive. The last thing I'll say, uh, this is, I think, from an outside perspective, uh, being an Xbox guy, um, you know, I, uh, I really haven't played. Uh, PlayStation has not been my primary console since PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the one gripe I've always had is the controller. I really don't like the PlayStation controller. It's something comforting about offset joysticks, which sounds ridiculous. Um, the original Xbox controllers were pretty terrible. They got better, although I like the Duke, the gigantic one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they started getting way more uh, advanced with ergonomics over PlayStation with 360. Um, I used to get hand cramps all the time playing PlayStation. Uh, something about they were, they were smaller controllers. The joysticks were closer together. Um, but uh, PlayStation 4 controller is great. Um, it's a little weird having the trackpad as the start button sort of thing. Yeah, that is a little um, weird. But yeah. um, I'm just glad we converted someone. Well, welcome to. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, the I'm way you're talking Xbox right now, it very it no, sounds I, like you joined the church of PlayStation. So, so I I will say that having both consoles um, now, it's probably not a fair thing to say because I have a uh, an OG Xbox One, mm -hmm. vanilla Xbox One, whatever you want to call it, and a PlayStation Slim. Which is a a new version, uh, you know. The, I don't, I don't have newer versions yeah. of it. Yeah. But between the two and uh, with the controller, although I still like the offset joysticks, the overall quality feel of it, Sony Sony has a one up on the controller because I, I I put the two. You heard it here first. I put the two Sony next to each other. So if, if you're holding my Xbox now, it also might be because I've had it for three or four years. But it was kind of like this on day one. But if I grip that controller hard enough, you can hear it creaking. Mm -hmm. But that PlayStation 4 controller feels like I could throw it up against the wall and it, nothing would happen to it. Back. It just feels like a more solid bit of equipment. I'm not going to compare the consoles because that's not fair unless I had an Xbox One uh, uh, S or X. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but either way, it's impressive. They improved over a lot of things too. PlayStation 3 felt like it took forever to um, like save things and uh, it kind of... PlayStation has a way of kind of bringing you out of the action when you do a manual save. Mm -hmm. It kind of brings you to that OS screen and you see the bar go up and it saves. You don't get that with Xbox. Um, it's more integrated into the game. Um, but either way, we could probably pick an entire episode <laughs> and I could do a, a comparison on that. But so far, it's been a pleasant experience. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll report back. I'm already Welcome almost halfway done with Spider-Man. Welcome to the team, buddy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, give him, a, give him a little bit of time. A week of playing God of War, he'll be start saying boy over and over again. Right. <laughs> boy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, speaking of cameos and Stan Lee, um, there's a little petition going out right now. Which I think is great. This is one of the best ideas so, I've heard in a long time. So fan theories and petitions are saying they want to see Deadpool as the new Stan Lee cameo in all the movies. And I know Ryan Reynolds would be all for it. Oh yeah, I don't. He hasn't said anything publicly yet, but I know he'd be all for it. And I don't even think. Uh, I mean, an occasional voice cameo would be great, where like, he actually would, says something. Yeah, I just think but, he'd pop up in the suit. Just yeah, even even if he's just walking in the background, and he doesn't even have to be in full suit. Like the idea of you know, like just a city street with people in like suits and ties walking down. And then you just see Deadpool walking by in like a suit and tie, but with the red mask sticking out. Of it. <laughs> like it can be absolutely ridiculous, even more so than the Stan Lee cameos. Yeah. It can um, be. Because of the character. And uh, I mean, yes, it would be nice. Obviously we have to have Ryan Reynolds if it's a speaking role, mm -hmm. but they could even just put anybody. No, I need, I need Ryan Reynolds in everything. <laughs> Cause he, emb he embodies the movement. Everything yeah. is Deadpool. Yeah. Like, well, that's one of the most perfect castings I ever seen. 
I, I, I agree. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited about this. I hope it takes off. Um, we'll see. I mean, also, look, Di- Disney signs the paperwork January 1st. So we'll, we'll really see right. what happens. I mean, they might listen to the fans and be like, hey, this will work. This is the way you can get Deadpool in a, in a non rated R movie. Yeah. yeah Besides true. Once Upon a Deadpool, that trailer came out again this week. Yeah. I. God, I don't. Why are we doing this? I don't know why, but I still want to see it. Like the only part I want to see is Fred Savage, and I'm pretty sure someone's going to post that on YouTube, like so, the day after. So just the, the 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 brilliance of that, like having having in that trailer set up like the beginning of the Princess Bride, like he's he's basically like the hostage mm-hmm. strapped down to the bed, and Deadpool's reading the book to him. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I don't know it. Um, when I first heard about this, I, I had uh, a knee-jerk reaction of that, that's ridiculous. Why would they do that? But it seems like they're adding in a bunch of extra content. It's not it's just not, the censored. Version. Okay, hold on. It's not that much censored content for me to go back to the theaters again. No, I agree. I, I need a whole – if you really want me to get – to see a movie over again, I need an hour's worth of more content. Yeah. And they're not doing that. Yeah. They're not going to add an hour's worth more. But By the way, I just want to point out, I'll commend you on your segue into the Deadpool trailer. That was good. We, we went, we, we're, was we're working transition. on our segues. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, we also had another big trailer mm-hmm. come out this week. Um, now you Another one that broke records. That record-breaking trailer. So Lion King live-action teaser came out Thanksgiving Day. Disney wants to give you a Thanksgiving present, even though that's not a thing. We're going to give it to you. And here it is. And I think... So I understand why I broke record. Like this is a Disney cult classic. Like this is one of Disney's biggest movies. And, and people have been holding out, wanting to see what this looked like. Yeah, I mean we've heard the cast: Donald Glover, Beyonce, um, James Earl Jones coming back. James Earl Jones. That was the biggest part. Like yeah. nobody else can be Mufasa. Really, no one can. No. Not the voice. So you you got um, Seth Rogen coming. All right. Yeah, in. Seth Rogen is a Pumba. Billy Pumbaa. Billy Eichner is Timon. Yep. Uh, uh, Zazu got, is played by John Oliver. Yeah, um, and then we have um, who's Rafiki? Do you know? Rafiki is I think the dot the father from Black Panther. That's right. I, I don't think, remember his name. I don't but remember, I remember his name. seeing that. Look, this he has one of the complicated names. Him and Scar, because <laughs> um, I know the character's face and the actor's face. Yeah. I just can't say his name. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, Alfred Wooder is playing um, Nafari. Uh, Mufasa's wife. It, it's it's a great cast, and they did a good teaser trailer. Yeah, we got pretty much everything we saw. I I saw as everything we saw in the animated teaser trailer when that came out. Right. So they just did it all live action. Now I'm not gonna lie. I watched it. I feel kind of weird watching this live action when it's not live action, and it's really an animated movie. But we're calling it live action. It's uh, it's still technically animated, yes. But uh, CG animated, yeah. Characters, animals, photo CG, re- photorealistic animation. I it's guess. animated still. Yeah. <laughs> animated CG, animated background. What did, is literally everything animated? Because almost the, pretty much everything is animated. Even the scenery and everything. The scenery and everything. Okay. But we're calling it live action. That's an animated. <laughs> Uh, let's just say photo. Can we say live animated? No, because that's a contradiction. <laughs> I mean, unless it's like a 50 50. Like, if they just blend, obviously, uh, Pride Rock is not a real place. No. So that has to be generated C- uh, with CG. But uh, oh, I, maybe, maybe they did build some of this stuff. The, this, the background does look CGI. But maybe they built some of this stuff because they did. I think they did that for Jungle Book. Right. That's true. So with the Jungle Book, they actually had people in outfits and mm-hmm. uh, mocap suits. Um, uh, doing the acting, so I, I'd be. I'm really curious. I'm almost more curious to see the behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Stuff I want to see the behind the scenes, the actual movie versus the actual movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 2019 summer. Um, yep. It broke. It broke a uh, trailer records because as the most viewed trailer on YouTube, 24 million in the first 24 hours. Yeah, that's literally a million people per hour. That's a lot of views. 
Yeah, we were, we were saying uh, we think the last one that broke the record was Glass. I want to say uh, that was the last one. Um, and don't I, hold me to that. But, but but there's every year there's literally almost every three months there's literally some trailer that comes out that breaks the old record. Yeah. Uh, I guess with uh, YouTube being more accessible, people uh, everybody has a mobile phone now. Uh, I mean, literally, you get the tweet, you can just go right on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. And everyone being at the dinner table on Thanksgiving when this thing comes out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, it's, it. Looks great. I'm uh, curious to see. Obviously, I, I'm going to see it. I just don't know if I'm going to pay money to go to the theater. To see okay. It. Here's here's the there. only thing. Like Disney, I. I don't know if I appreciate all these remakes. I, I appreciate the Jungle Book one because yeah. that added something. That added a lot. Like, Shere Khan was a, was a mob boss now. Yeah. Like, he was a legit killer. Like, I got more story. I got more depth. They took out some songs, but I got more history and more story. So I was fine with that remake. But Beauty and the Beast remake, I didn't get nothing except that the midget dude was gay and the um, and I got one extra song out of it. Like that's not adding enough for me to I, say. I can't I can't actually say anything about it because I haven't seen either. Um, but yeah, I I think it's uh, you need more, a kid. I need to borrow my kid to you so you can see these movies. It's more <laughs> well, it's, it's all more eye candy, I guess. I'm, I'm not I'm not interested in seeing it because you know I know. I mean, it's even what happen. what Maleficent was supposed to be kind of a, a remake, but it was more on the villain right. side. So that was that wasn't a remake. That was a legit movie just yeah. dedicated to Maleficent. But all these remakes. You need to give me something new, because Lion King is a favorite of mine. Aladdin is definitely a favorite of mine. So don't I've seen these movies over and over again. I have them on my PlayStation for my daughter to watch, because I've made sure she watched classic movies. I'm yeah. like, yo, you need to watch this movie. I don't want to hear none of that Netflix stuff. You watch it's a, this. It's a prerequisite. Before yeah, you can get to any of the other stuff. Um, uh, it, it doesn't add to the story. I don't understand why the why the remake. Because yeah. Lion King still holds up as an animated movie. Lion King still holds yeah. up. Yeah, Aladdin still holds up. Yeah, all the ones from the early nineties. It's not until you get to the uh, it's, it's uh, the eighties, the seventies, yeah. where it's like, yeah. all right, we need need to redo something. Snow White. Yeah, I can understand doing a remake of that one. Well, that was a little. That was a little trash. You, you also you also think of. I mean, that's. Those are more works of art because they literally had to draw yeah, they, every I, single scene. I, mean, I commend like, those artists, but they do not age well. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, I'm looking forward to it. Um, 2019 Lion King. Summer. Here we'll it comes. comes up. Now, uh, we had a trailer uh, drop last week for Toy Story 4. Yep. And you have some casting news on that. Yeah. So um, Keanu Reeves is going to join as a voice in Toy Story 4. He was not declared what voice he was going to be, but I came up with a theory. He's going to be a John Wick action figure, and some's going to have to Slinky the dog, <laughs> and he's going to go on a toy rampage. So I was just thinking it would be uh, you know, Neo from The Matrix or uh, 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 Bill from Bill and Ted, you know, a little action figure in the background. But no, but, well, okay, well, seriously, which tr what iconic? Keanu Reeves character do we want? Do we want Blake uh, Breakpoint? Do we want Bill and Ted? Do we want Matrix? Or do we want John Wick? Well, so I would want John Wick, but I think if they did the Matrix, then more people would get it. Uh, but we're, we're, more people get it cause we're only speculating, though. This It's probably not going to be any of that. It's it's probably I, gonna honestly, be, I hope it's none yeah, of this. Because yeah, this it is, would be ridiculous. This is really ridiculous. But if I had to pick uh, iconic character. I just see Neo being like an early Buzz Lightyear thinking he can fly. <laughs> right. We're all in the Matrix. Right. This isn't real. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. When, uh, the, what what childhood, classic childhood toy uh, that they haven't covered yet uh, in Toy Story? Is there a toy they haven't covered? I don't know. I'm sure there's Depends on if they license other things that they haven't. But, like, I, they can't do, like, Lego toys and stuff. Uh, now, I think they got, like, a Lego-type toy. You know, so you got the Green Army Man. You got dolls. You got action. You yeah. got action figure. You got you got plush. I, I can't think of anything else that they yeah. haven't done. Uh, uh, but, yeah. So that's an interesting voice. Uh, you, you, 
you know Keanu Reeves when he starts talking, he's got a very recognizable voice. Yeah, yeah. but it's most of the time a very like most of his acting so far has been not his acting, but his voice has been very dry monotone. and monotone. Yeah. I just want to see how is that going to interact with voices like you know Tom Hanks and you know characters like that that have range in their voice, right? Unless they just purposely give him a character that's going to suit his voice well, yeah. Like Ben Stein. Ben Stein used to be in everything, just had that like monotone. Yeah. Bueller. Bueller. Yeah. What toy can be that monotone? <laughs> I don't know. It's all up to our Maybe a live ways. doll. <laughs> <laughs> right. Something like, you know, weird. Put put a Keanu Reeves voice inside of something you weren't expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the, uh, the the snowball that won't stop spinning down the hill. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Venom, Are we still talking about this movie? We still haven't seen Venom. We're yet. still talking about a movie talking trash on it. Though, that cheated. Um, yeah, I said <laughs> Venom cheated. You came on a weekend in the middle of October when no one's really banging with movies. And if you look at December slate, that's where all the superhero movies are right now. Right. So, so Venom uh, worldwide is now at seven hundred and eighty million dollars, which that that means it's bigger than any X Men movie, and that includes Deadpool. Yeah, that's sad. So, yeah, so we, we're still talking trash on it, but we haven't seen it, man. Maybe we should just go uh, ahead and break down cave and watch in it. and just watch it. I'll catch it maybe when it gets to the bird. You're in Richmond's second run theater. Uh, you might not be in Richmond. Be. That's like another week or so. Yeah. 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 So, I obviously. I uh, might be longer. I swear I just saw Equalizer 2 when I passed the bird theater. <laughs> so, obviously, it, it did something right because a lot of people are watching it. Uh, it was huge. I already cheated. Huge in Asia. I'm uh, telling you right now, this movie will, uh, whatever sequel comes after it, will only come in in October. And speaking of movies coming out, yeah. Sony has set another good segue. <laughs> working on them, uh, Sony has set their pace to have two more productions done in 2020. Yep. Um, it looks like one's going to be in June, and another's going to be in October. So. And we already know Venom 2 sequel is coming. Right. That's probably the October one because they're going to cheat again. It's not cheating, man. It's cheating. You're it's so own. cheating. We don't know what, else, what other competition might be on that particular day. But we already know, too, another Sony movie, Yep. Um, which is Morbius. Which um, is working on production now. We saw Jared yeah. Leto do his... Jared, Jared Leto isms. Yeah, he he, he uh, put on Facebook and Twitter. I think he did a video yeah, where he, he shaved, shaved his beard, and uh, you know they did a little um, kind of a, a knockoff. It wasn't an actual logo for the movie, but mm-hmm. they had like the vampire teeth and everything. Um, so we know that's coming uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, yeah, this is pre-production, so they haven't started filming yet, but they're probably starting to fit him for costumes and things like that. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's reasonable to think that Venom 2 and Morbius, and Morbius. are yeah. in these two slots that Sony has picked for 2020. I, I'd bet money on it, and let's see how they do. I mean, maybe they got a, maybe they got their formula now. Yeah. Maybe they understand, like, all right, I have my lane. This is where I'm going to stick in, and I'm going to do these outrageous characters from a Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man. Yeah. That we'll was see. a diss. It would be... It, it, it would be weird. It's still weird. Just stick with the MCU. Don't do your own thing, Sony. For the fans' sake. Um, so we got the final trailer for Aquaman. Uh, yes. Of this week, this past week. Um, and it, gave got a little bit, it gave a little bit more of a story. Yeah, and that's what, the 21st of December, I mm-hmm. think? Uh, so right before Christmas, everybody's getting ready to go on vacation. So, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how this does, money-wise, yeah. because... I, 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 th- I want to see how it does critically, like how well the movie is received. Now I want to see how well it does money wise, because normally this is a time when no one has money. True, but the weird thing is, and I always thought that too. My my family was never one to go to the uh, to go to the movies uh, during the holidays, mm-hmm. but the holidays are statistically the biggest time of the year. Uh, Christmas uh, is the it, more people spend more money on movies, seeing movies in the, in the movie theater on Christmas and the week around it than any other point in the year. 
Um, it's just it's a very narrow amount of time, so that's why you don't get the big blockbusters and mm -hmm. stuff until the summer when more people have time, uh, a free time. And, and it is like the, the time that most people are visiting family. Right. Sometimes it's, it's just easier for our family to go out to a movie versus yeah. um, staying cooped up in the house and not talking about their feelings. <laughs> We just, we just got out of Thanksgiving. Maybe that's a little bit of a, a pent, pent up. Uh, too close to home. Too close to home. Right. Yeah. Freudian slip or one of those. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to see Aquaman in theaters. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm seeing that one. But um, it's, it, already, it's already up for pre William Defoe. Yeah, yeah, we got to see that. Yeah. We got to see him training. Like, like, that was pretty cool. So, that makes me also question how long is this movie? Do they have a final run time? For I, don't, I don't know. I have to look that up, but I swear this looks like a three hour movie. Yeah, I mean, it probably would have to be close to it. Um, but uh, but the trailer, the trailers have done well with not giving away a whole lot. You they haven't go, given away a whole lot, but they've given away some glorious scenes. But yeah, confirmed two hours and 23 minutes. So not super long, that's but not that's, super a, pretty, long, that's but a pretty long movie. I, I, I would have I swore it would be like 250. Two yeah. hours and fifty minutes, but um, no, it it again, it looks gorgeous. Um, the underground, the underwater fight scenes look pretty amazing. All it's, the crazy animals and you know, yeah. crustaceans and stuff fighting, and um, I, I think that they've already done what I thought was impossible, and that is make Aquaman cool. Mm -hmm. Because I I thought that there years ago, if you had asked me this, I would have said zero chance that that's not going to come off as corny, ridiculous, you know, although they didn't, you know, he's not wearing like the superhero uh, tights, you know, they did away with Superman's red underwear, which I mean, but he, they got the color scheme for that last outfit. And it looks good. And I didn't think no one can make that orange and green look good. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So let us know, you know, are, are any of you listening out there, are you planning on seeing it on day one? Uh, um, I'm, I'm planning on it. At least <laughs> opening weekend is what I'm hoping. Yeah, for. Day one. I want no spoilers. Yeah. I want to be the one getting spoilers. <laughs> so, uh, so switching back, I guess, to DC for a moment. Um, you had, yeah, uh, there was a... Um, so we know the crossover for that they do for CW every year. They got a crossover Supergirl, um, Flash, Arrow, probably Legends of Tomorrow. I don't know if they do it this year. The Legends of Morals, but it feels like they should. Um, three and I event, and it's called Else World. So we're going to get a little bit of monitor. We're going to get some new characters. So we've been anticipating Ruby Rose playing Batwoman. Yeah. Um, and we got to see a trailer of her in action. And it's the trailer pretty much starts off as um, everyone switch roles, where uh, Oliver is now the Flash, Barry is now the Green Arrow. Uh, it looks like Supergirl is like in prison, and you see Barry and Cisco out looking for Batman. Like this is the first time we've actually acknowledged right. Batman's existence in the CW. We've heard, we've heard cook, we've heard Easter eggs like, oh, Wayne Enterprise. We've heard, oh, uh, Superman say, oh, I, I have a partner who's moody. You know, we've heard all these little snippets, but we have not actually heard Batman's name. Yeah. This is the first time we hear Batman. They're looking for Batman, and they run into one Batwoman instead. So, great segue. I, I like where it's going. This trail looks inter interesting. And this starts December 2nd, so we're getting real close to it. I mean, next weekend? Yeah. So, Saturday, right? Next Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah, Sunday. So, stay tuned. We'll be giving a little quick We'll probably do a little quick trailer, or not trailer, but we'll give a quick review on it yeah. um, on the not the next podcast, but podcast after that. One. Yeah. But yeah, it looks exciting. Um, I'm in really anticipating like how they're going to do this. So, um, even though the CW season this year is not the greatest, and I'm talking about Arrow and Supergirl, just being honest, Flash is it, it's got my attention still. But it can make one wrong move and lose my attention very quickly. <laughs> and uh, as for me, I'll catch up on all of it eventually. I am really interested in seeing this uh, Batgirl or Batwoman. Though. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll we'll catch up. I guess what we'll film next week, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it'll air shortly after. I'm guessing. Oh, and talking about like um, new characters, 
we have Donna Troy is going to be showing up in Titans next week on the Titans show on DC Universe. So this is the first time we've really seen Donna Troy, which is known as Wonder Girl, the sidekick, the Wonder Woman, um, really shown on live on live action. We've seen yeah. glimpses in old cartoons. We've even seen a glimpse in like the last uh, Teen Titans movie. Um, at the end credits, but we've never really seen Wonder Girl Donna Troy in media like this. So we're really excited. They did a great job casting um, Connor Leslie from A Man in High Castle, which that's, yeah. his, that's his show. Which I'll admit, I didn't even recognize her. She plays uh, the main character's sister in Man in the High Castle. Uh, I didn't even recognize her in these set photos because uh, she in Man in the High Castle, you know, she's kind of roughed up. She's a, a dimension traveler sort of thing and uh uh we even saw her die in the first season mm -hmm. uh, uh so um yeah it's a, a it's a pretty big transition for this particular act actress she doesn't look anything like what she did in the other series and she looks like gal gadot's little sister yeah <laughs> i think that was on purpose uh so so good casting um you get to see a little bit of her superpowers in, in the trailer which you can check online now but i'm looking forward to seeing this and I'm hoping that this guest appearance becomes more prominent in the second season. Like, yeah, because it's good that we have four, but I need a bigger team. I, I just like a bigger team, like yeah. for the Titans. It's it's needed, but second season's already renewed, so I'm pretty sure they're working on this stuff. And I think they've been, um, you even pointed out that they start working on. Some Batman, yeah. So I, I saw a, a couple of different articles this week pop up about how they uh, they released the uh, different ideas that they had for the Batmobile. Uh, so I guess you'll be seeing that eventually. Um, and uh, they're pretty far out there as far as um, all over the place. You mm -hmm. have one that looks closer to the Tumblr, one that looks closer to the Batman the Animated Series, some that look like literally look like the Adam West uh, Batmobile mixed with Lamborghini, like the split roof, you know, seats on either side. Uh, and uh, one was from one of the animated series. Yeah, I think Batman and the Bear in the Bowl. Yeah, um, with the uh, kind of the bat. Uh, the bat uh, head. On, yeah, the bat head, head on the front on the of the Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see. I how mean, we've made some, we they did make some jokes like Jason Todd can drive around in the Batmobile. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they kept his origin. I had to give him the prop. They kept his origin the same too. Like, it was like, Oh, how did Bruce find you? Oh, I was trying to take the wheels off the Batmobile. Which is exactly how it was in the, in comments, the comments, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a great job. Yeah. Um, this series really, um, as a flagship series, is doing a great job. And then we're going to have the next flagship series, Young yeah. Justice, coming in January 4th. So yeah. they just keep doing, just keep trucking along and keep doing their thing. And, you know, we'll get more subscribers, I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's sticking with, uh, the, uh, oh, Batman, uh, the Batman Chief. universe, uh, we'll touch on some comics here. Uh, Detective Comics, uh, number 1000, uh, comes out this week, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, this is, uh, unique because it's actually going to make, uh, Arkham Knight. So those of you who played the Arkham video games, uh, the trilogy, uh, Arkham Knight is the main antagonist in the last game. Uh, Arkham Knight is now going to be, uh, canon. Uh, in the Batman comic books, uh, starting with uh, number 1,000 of Detective Comics. Um, so I don't think it's a spoiler because that that game has been out for a few years now. It's been out for a few years. Even if you played five seconds of it, you kind of know who the guy is. Yeah, it doesn't take if you have, If you have any history in Batman, you know. As soon as you will see it, like guys, Jason Todd. Yeah. So <laughs> Arkham Knight is basically just an extra layer on top of the Red Hood. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Todd. So... Uh, uh, you know, it plays out uh, as just a modified version of it, what, the way it was in the comics uh, with Arkham Knight. Uh, but still, I'm excited to see um, this is uh, something that doesn't happen too often. No. Um, really, the, I mean, I know it's happened other times before, but the first thing that comes to mind is uh, like Harley Quinn. Yeah, uh, Harley Quinn, X-23. Um those are, are, those are the top two on my head, in the top of my head right now. Instances where, uh, like, Harley Quinn uh, was created for the animated series, but then was integrated into everything. Else. We've become so popular in, in other media besides comics. That's And then you get introduced into comics. That's 
pretty amazing. And I think, yeah. Um, well, we'll say that for another day. Because I'm starting to see they're changing Aquaman's look little by little to match a certain someone. Jason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Old, old Jason Momoa. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they kind of dread up his hair a little bit. And a lot of hair. I'm going to put some brown streaks in that thing soon. Right. Uh, so then we have some news for the uh, Disney streaming service. More news on top of Yes. Like, this is more we confirmation. Can't, look, let me tell you something. Disney's going to, I'm pretty sure they're going to release new news on their streaming service like every week or every other week until this thing comes out. Yeah. So, yes, Rogue One series. We got confirmation on a casting, right? Yeah, so Diego Luna, uh, who played uh, Cassian Andor uh, in Rogue One, is uh, coming back for his own television series, obviously uh, a prequel to Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Um, Spoiler alert, everybody dies uh, in in Rogue One. That's how it's ended, even though they pretty much told you that in the beginning, like this is the mission that no one survived. (laughs) Right. So uh, uh, I think it's it's great. We get to get a little more uh, backstory, although he was kind of a... Kind of a scoundrel, even more than uh, Han Solo or something. You know, he was uh, obviously when you see the movie, uh, he's uh, actually considering just killing people outright for the rebellion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if you stand in his way, he's gonna he's gonna kill you. So I'm curious to see where they have that character uh, go. In a I'm curious curious to see how many people are gonna watch this because we kind of almost had. I think there was a borderline with when that Rogue One came out that people didn't want to see a movie they already knew the ending to. I don't know. I I mean it's Star Wars. People are still going to eat it up, and there's a reason why so many people. I feel still like we're getting a see. little bit too much Star Wars content. Like yeah. unless Disney really spreads this out. That's true too. We do not have any. Uh, we don't have any on I, a idea like dates. We don't know if it's going to be episodic. We don't know if this is going to be binge. We, we don't know anything yet. And I think DC did a good job with like keeping that under wraps until like a couple of weeks before. Right. And I think that's probably going to be the same thing with Disney. I think they're going to keep a lot of things because, well, we, we know three Star Wars series, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Mandalorian, World One. Right. We've got a minimum of three MCU series we got loki scarlet witch right. and then we also have the falcon and winter soldier um buddy series yeah and what else do we have anything else those are the biggest ones those are the biggest ones yeah. that's six series already that's a lot and we don't I, even know the yeah. spacing i would imagine that's all going to encompass probably and all like that's two, expensive two years i mean let me tell you all that's expensive too because mandalorian is a million dollars per episode yeah which is, is basic? It, is it million or ten million? I think it was a million dollars an episode because it. I I, I was thinking that uh, like that's as expensive as like uh, massive sitcoms mm-hmm. like Friends, right? So yeah. like the when Friends got to whatever it was season ten, I think was the last season. They were they were going for like a million dollars per actor per episode. Uh, so yeah, when that's why I'm, about, I'm starting to think it might have been ten million. Yeah, per episode. But so they're basically starting the budget at where most series on it's network still, television end. And let me tell you how business and budgets work. You set yourself too high, no matter what. Even if you make your money, the people coming back are gonna want more. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not a one and done deal. Like oh, I'm gonna pay you this amount of money for the next ten years. Yeah. Like nah, man. I got. I need more. It's like a living expense. Like we get annual increases for our daily jobs. They want annual increases for their jobs. Mm-hmm. Theirs just comes in a lot bigger sums. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to watch it no matter what. Disney yeah. streaming service is one that I'll probably get. Regardless, I mean, unless they charge it's something. It's going to be another else. one that's going to be. I feel like a lot of people want to share. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, as long as they're cool about that, which everybody, every other streaming service, every does. other streaming service pretty much is. It's almost like a we know you're doing it, just don't tell us. But I will say Disney is more stingy about uh, any of the other copyright things than just about anybody else. Uh, for for example, for example, uh, my wife is an elementary school teacher, and uh, her county that she teaches in 
uh, actually won't let them show Disney movies. Like if it's, you know, the end of a half day or something like that, when every, every kid would get to watch, you know, a, a movie or something right before they leave for spring break or something like that. Um, they're not allowed to watch Disney movies because Disney actually says that they'll take, take you to court if you show it uh, in front of like an audience or, or something like that. So her County will not allow teachers to show that. And my thing is, is not only do, do other places show it, you know, you might have like a neighborhood movie or something like that, mm -hmm. but can you imagine the PR nightmare that Disney would be in for suing a public school system yeah. for showing a classroom their movie? Like, I, I think like it's really, you, know, you, really you should be grateful. You should be grateful because I'm giving you free publicity. Right. Like, I'm literally viewing how people watch your movie, and they're probably kids normally like, yo, I want that movie at home. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, uh, you have some, uh, some updates, I guess, uh, in the world of anime. Yes, so end of the year is upon us. We only got a couple of more weeks of 2018, and we're going to go right into 2019. And there are some anime adaptations coming up that I'm looking really excited for. So I just wanted to name the top three anim new animes that are coming out. Now, we already know that Attack on Titan, uh, My Hero Academia, Black Clover, they're all going to be coming back. Um, so... Look forward to those, but here's a couple new ones that you might not have heard of. Uh, I'll start off the first one with um, Neverland's Promise, which I don't have the exact translation, but it's uh, that's the way it's translated in English. Uh, it's pretty much a story about orphan children that are living this perfect life in this orphanage. Everyone's happy, but well, there's a deep, dark secret behind the orphanage, and you find out more and more as every episode goes on. So it's one of those supernatural thriller type ones. Uh, a little dark, but definitely worth the watch. Um, the, the manga was exceptional. It's almost like a survival anime where these kids are surviving for their lives. So great series. Check that out. The other one that I'm super excited for is Dr. Stone. In a world that has been petrified by mystical light, Everyone's been toned to stone. This new human group wakes up thousands of years later, and they have to rebuild society with a guy that's a science nerd who's <clears throat> all about science, and he wants to figure out everything. Dr. Stone, it's a great uh, great read. I get to actually learn stuff when I read this mega. <laughs> yeah. um, so very educational and very comedy driven action based so this will be also a very good watch um, for all ages and then we also have the special fire brigade which is coming out next year we've got that announcement uh, if you if you like soul eater which is another cult classic anime you're definitely gonna love fire uh, fire bridge brigade special fire bridge brigade um, pretty much follows the story of a kid that wants to be a hero um, with special powers, and he fights these um, anomalies that happen for the fire department. So, great watch. Take a look. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I just want to give you all some bias, a little um, quick synopsis so you can get get your get your taste buds wet for anime. All right? That all sounds good. I concur with Michelle. She says Neverland's Promise sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> It is a little weird, um, especially when you're dealing with little kids. But if you like suspense and thrillers, that's going to be a good one. My wife, I know, is not into suspense and thrillers. She's like into the happy-go-lucky, um, the guy, the superhero, the main character punches everyone in the face type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we also have a new announcement about Kingdom Hearts. We got the final trailer. Which this is coming out January 29th, 2019. I know I'm saving my money up for that. Um, and this game has been in the making for over 10 years. Like yeah. we've been waiting for it. So we got a great trailer. We got to see some of the worlds that Sora and Goofy and Donald will be going to, like Big Hero 6, Tangled, Frozen, um, and Toy Story. So we're, it's gonna be a fun game. If you fan of the first and second one. Um, and even the games in between, you're definitely going to be a fan of this one. So I look forward to that, and we will be giving our review once that comes out. And I play that for 20 
thousand hours. All right. So, so Michelle should prepare for that. Just, just she, go ahead, honey. Knows, prepare. Sure. Um, just, just keep a bowl of ramen next to me while I play, and I'll be good. <laughs> All right, and we got a little box office news. So yeah. we were talking about the holidays being great for families to get together and watch movies. Well, Thanksgiving, we had a couple doozies come out, uh, including Wreck-It Ralph, who wrecked the box office this week, and coming in at five-day weekend at like $84 million? Yeah. yeah. So that's nothing to sleep at. And Wreck-It Ralph completely dominates the, the theaters this week. Leaving Creed coming in in two, Creed two coming in in two, um, at fifty five million, which is still a great, it's still a great, great opening for um, a boxing movie. You know, it's not what we get so used to these summer blockbusters. And yeah, stuff, and that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it really is. It really is, yeah. And um, yeah, so it was really pretty much you know Michael B. Jordan versus um, John C. Riley, and looks like John C. Riley came above top in yeah. this boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was uh, anything surprising, just no, because uh, it's, Wreck-It it's, Ralph 1 did so well. Wreck-It Ralph 1 did so well, and Wreck-It Ralph is a kid-friendly movie. And as the holidays are upon us, we are looking for more kid-friendly entertainment. So I can take my daughter to see Wreck-It Ralph. Um, there's some parts of Creed I got to cover her eyes on, which I did. <laughs> or no, I didn't. I let Yaya and Papa do that one. <laughs> Yeah, y'all cover our eyes for those scenes. But yeah, it was um, Creed 2. I did get to see that one. Um, and I will be doing a later uh, full movie review on it. But it was a good movie. It was a little predictable. I mean, you're facing against Kyle Drago's son. Like, what's, what's, we already know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, very good. Uh, but still, good acting on both sides. Like, no one phoned it in. That's right. what's great. Like, Sylvester Stallone could have been phoned this thing in. It's it's also kind of difficult for them to follow up Creed 1, mm-hmm. which was a surprise hit. Was. Um, yeah. I question that surprise hit. I know we we looked at it. We were surprised the movie was coming out, but I didn't think it was a surprise hit. I think if you were a rock, if you, this was a reigniting of the rock. Well, I, I guess it was, it was more that it was a, um, it was the, a ma- the mass appeal was even bigger than what a lot of people, because Rocky, I mean, you look at the the later Rocky movies. Mm-hmm. Um, they did okay, uh, but no, you know, there's kind of a slope. Let's be in the honest. Movie. After three, it's downhill. No, dude, four had the rush in it. I like. Oh, no, oh, yeah, no, after four, no, after four. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's five. Downhill. Five was depressing. Rocky Balboa was pretty good. It was okay. Eh. I mean, eh. yeah. Rocky Five was downright trash, but yeah. yeah, but um, and you can, you know what? I'll go back to it. From three on, the the only good part of four was the Russian. Three was Mr. T, right? Mr. T, yeah. Clover Bands. <laughs> See, I like. I, I growing up, four was my favorite. I have to say the second one, my favorite. Yeah. Which is weird to say that the fourth one in a series was my favorite. That didn't happen that often. No, no. I I, um, I enjoyed the second the most. So the Apollo was like, he, he just felt like he didn't win. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Everyone wants to say about this loser. Right. But I, I think uh, it just it did even better than what a lot of people mm-hmm. thought it would. So it was kind of hard to follow up. I mean, I, like, I did like three because that's where you see Apollo and Rocky get together. Right. Like that's when you see that friendship go, and then four I didn't like because they the, took it away. The the workout montage, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so uh, I guess we can we can jump over a little bit to uh, something we touched on a bit last week, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, now the rumors are abounding with Detective Pikachu, uh, the trailer dropping, and I think uh, universally it was well received. Yes, uh, and um, more than it should have been. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put that out there. This idea should not be a movie. Right. It's it's weird, but it's happening, and we're loving it. <laughs> but uh, so uh, a lot of people were saying basically what we were talking about last week, and that uh, shared universe could happen. We mm-hmm. can see Red, yep. as you pointed out last week, or Ash, 
I know you don't want to see Ash. I don't want to see Ash lose again. Uh, but that seems to be the popular the popular thing right now. And so we're gonna have to wait and see obviously how this movie. Does. Or it can be a totally different gener- It can be a totally different right. thing. Like there's so many possibilities with this whole universe. So um, I look forward to it, even though some of the Pokemon are looking creepy. And let's face it, we're not gonna get. What what's the count at now with Pokemon? It's like the oh, it's it's eight, in the it's in the nine hundred nine hundred yeah. right. So we're not going to see all 900 in this, but we did get to see like... You're going to see hints at almost all of them. We're going to see hints. IGN has a really good video of a trailer breakdown and pointing out all the different references to all the different Pokemon. Even if it's just a sign, Mm -hmm. it's the silhouette of one particular Pokemon they go out on it. So it's pretty good. Um, I saw a little bit of Ninja. I saw my my Pokemon Ninja in there. I'm like, yes. Seems like they're the bad guys in this. I'm like, they're ninjas. Right? Frog ninjas. (laughs) Which are the best kind, right? I should not be excited about frog ninjas. Next to turtle ninjas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know. So, uh, that brings us down to uh, random battles. Random battles. All right. So, this week, I'll be mar- I'll be debating for March and Manhunter, right? Yeah. And you'll be debating for the planet eater himself, Galactus. Galactus. So, it's pretty much telepathy over power cosmic. Which one's more powerful? Power cosmic being all-powerful can't beat him. Well, it's that's a fallacy because people beat Galactus. On a rare occasion. But it happens. Alright, so so then I'll let you take the first shot. What would be the first step that Martian Manhunter would take to take out Galactus? I'm gonna go something non-traditional. Okay. Alright. I, I already know telepathy's not gonna work. Power Cosmic has blockage on Telepaths, because if it wasn't, Xavier would have been mind blown Galactus a long time ago. So that's not going to work. But brute strength, Martian Manhunter is almost as strong as Superman. So I'm going to have to go fisticuffs on this one. Yeah. And honestly, I think Superman can give Galactus a run for his money, physical physical strength wise. Um, I mean, so I'm going to go ahead and go fist to fist with him. It's going to be like a little gnat, but a very powerful gnat that punches you in the face and swings around and punches you in the face again. Yeah. And then, you know, Galactus uh, just opens up a portal and sends you to a different dimension. Can he open up portals? Yeah, he has, like, portal. He can do, like, dimensional rifts and stuff like that. Yeah. He can also just calculations. Grow, grow to the size of a city. I mean, you know, you might be able to... Wasn't he already the size of a city? Well, he can change, basically, what his size is, but uh, yes... Yeah. Normally, he's like the size of a city. That's like his base form. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to be the size of the city right here. And then eat your planet. You know, if you're trying to be intimidated, that's kind of what you go for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll we'll take the dimensional thing out of it at all. But Honestly, even taking the dimensional thing out, this is going to be Martian Manhunter's loss. I'm going to have to concede. Okay. Uh, Because he is going to use telepathy first. Because that's his go-to move. Yeah. He can phase, so those are good things to dodge, but that's only going to last so long. And with his weakness being fire, this does not help, especially when Galactus has a herald just made of fire. <laughs> yeah. This dude got a henchman made of my weakness. <laughs> that's not a good combination. <laughs> so, uh, I guess uh, we'll, we'll call it for Galactus. Yeah, we're going to have to call it for Galactus on this one. But we can see who we're going to be arguing for next week. Let's go. All right. Don, you will be arguing for uh, Wiccan from Marvel Comics. Okay, the, the son of Scarlet Witch. That's yeah. entertaining. And you will be Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> so it's the witches against the witches. That's a good one. Nice. We should not play this even better. <laughs> right. All right. So stay tuned next time. Uh, join us next time to see who will win. Sabrina the Teenage Witch or Wiccan the Son of a Witch? It'll be interesting. Dude, the puns we're going to get off of this one. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's our time, though. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Uh, Keep up with us on Twitter, on Geek Philosophy Q. You can also check us on Instagram, geek underscore underscore philosophy. And you can also check us on our Facebook page. Um, We'll be trying to do more trailers and more 
news as the weeks go on. So stay tuned. All right. Geek philosophy, geek way of thinking. Have a great day, y'all. Bye. All right.